Hey there, Ronnie here from Four Wheeling in Western Australia. In this video, we're going to cover differential lockers or diff lockers. Uh, we're going to show you how they work, when to use them, what terrains they, they're good for, and some situations where you sh probably shouldn't use them. Subscribers, welcome back and first time viewers. G'day, I'm Ronnie from Four Wheeling in Western Australia. The Four Drive Information website uh, pretty much has everything covered in regards to full driving and camping. Righto, so let's get into this the video. The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take the, I'm going to take the dual cab cruiser up here. Uh, we're at the Mundaring power lines and it's bloody cold this morning, so I'm just going to keep moving around. Um, coming down is no problem because you're going downhill, so your car's always, the gravity's going to help you. So you can have open diffs, that's fine. Going up though is another matter because it's so uneven and it may not look that steep on camera, but it's, a, it's not that steep really, but it is, is enough of an incline to cause a problem. So I'll show you with the cruiser without a locker and then with a locker, and then you can make up your own mind. At this stage, I have no lockers on. And as you can see, I'm not going anywhere. Try a bit of momentum this time. This time, I have the rear locker engaged only. I do have front and rear, but I've only got the rear one engaged. Should be enough for this. And slowly creeping through. And that's the trick of a locker. You creep through slowly. There's no need for momentum or speed on this type of terrain anyway. So to quickly explain how the differential lockers work. Well, a normal differential has the name differential because when you, they're made, there's design. So when you turn a corner, that the outside wheel can do more rotations than the inside wheel. Most vehicles will have an open diff on the front. On the rear, a lot of vehicles will have what's called an LSD, limited slip diff. It'll still slip. It just means it limits the slip that it does. It's also there to allow your vehicle to turn because the outside wheel is always going to spin more than the inside wheel when you turn, if you think about it. So when you're off-road, your differential will always send drive or power or force to the wheel with least resistance. So if you lift a wheel or you have loss of traction, say one wheel's in mud, the other wheel's on rock, the wheel with least traction will spin, leaving the other wheel possibly not spinning at all. With an LSD rear, you may get the occasional jerk in the other wheel that has traction, but in most situations, it's not gonna work. I don't care how good your LSD is, it's not gonna work in most situations. This is where diff lockers come in. What they do is when you engage them, they engage drive to both axles, to both wheels, and regardless, you lift the wheel, regardless of what you're in, both wheels are gonna rotate at the same rate. Now obviously it makes turning a bit tougher, but you don't use them for when you turn, you use them for when you're in a situation you need to get out of, or you need traction. Righto, so let's get into when you should use your lockers, or locker. Uh, first off, if you're bogged in the sand before you dig yourself too deep, sticking a locker on can actually get you out without having to dig at all. So if you're not down too far, you can actually, what, what I do in the cruiser, works for me, if I get bogged, I stop, I put it in first gear low, I put front and rear on, and then I just take my feet off, literally take my feet off the pedals and just wait for it to crawl out. Now, it hasn't not worked for me yet. Now, obviously, if you're bogged down to the axles, it's not gonna work. They're just gonna spin, because you're already down too far. Another reason, going up hills, you can use your front and rear. However, if you need to turn on the hill, you need to flick your front locker off which is no big issue, it's pretty quick to do. You can get away with just your rear locker most of the time. Going downhills, don't use your front locker, just use your rear locker. Rear locker only for downhills. It keeps the vehicle nice and straight. It will help prevent it sliding a little bit. Another reason, really uneven terrain, like I've driven up just before, that's really uneven, you can get a lot of that. Even going downhill, it's good to keep the locker on, the rear locker at least, because it will, it will stop the vehicle from shooting away from you. When crossing riverbeds, 
wherever it's rocky or soft sand, it's not a bad idea to have the rear locker at least engage. That way, if you start slowing down, you're gonna have that extra momentum or that extra traction to keep you going. A big reason to use one is to prevent damage to your vehicle because some situations you need a lot of momentum to get up things. Whereas you just click your locker on, you can just crawl up it in first gear low. But if there's no traction there and you don't have a locker, you may have to be in second gear low or third gear low, flogging it up just to make it. Uh, risking, you know, bouncing and, and damage to your vehicle, etc. Final reason is preventing track damage. As you saw before, when I was stuck over there, you saw how much sand I was digging up and how big a hole I was making. So if you keep doing that everywhere, you just, you're going to carve up everything. Okay, so if you have a locker, use it, and you're not carving anything up. You make it a lot easier for the next bloke who's coming through, or lady. Pros and cons with differential lockers. There are too many pros to list. I've already covered heaps, but just two a lot to mention that I did mention before. One is you get to this obstacle, everyone else is struggling to get up it because they don't have a locker. Then you roll up and you put your locker on and you cruise up in the first gear load. It's, it's such an awesome feeling. And you can rub it in a bit, but not too much. Another pro is for IFS vehicles, independent front suspension vehicles, the ones with the um, wishbone suspension or A-arms as you Americans know them as. When you install a differential locker to the front of those, a lot of the time you actually strengthen the diff up, which is great. And also, instead of smashing it up a hill and you're risking that wheel not contacting the ground, spinning like mad, and then all of a sudden it contacts the ground, those weaker CVs are prone to just get crunched. So when you have a locker, the benefit is you drive up slowly and you're not gonna crunch that front axle. Of course, it can happen to solid axle vehicles as well, like this one. Now to cons. There's only really one con to diff lockers, and that is the price. Uh, they can be quite expensive. Uh, what kills you is the insulation and the price of the locker itself. Don't go for uh, cheap no-name ones because um, they're not up to standard. Go for the, the well-known brand name ones when it comes to diff lockers because the labels are going to cost you the same. You don't want to have to rip it out and put another one in. Bear in mind, if you go for air lockers, you need an air compressor as well. So you're adding on cost there. If you're, lucky, if you're a lucky person like myself who got them in factory, my 70 series has front and rear mechanical differential lockers in it, came as standard. Uh, I believe the Jeep Rubicon, just to name a few, has front and rear as well when it comes out uh, as brand new. When not to use your lockers? When you have plenty of traction, don't use your lockers because all you're going to do is you're going to bind up bind up your drivetrain and something, something's got to give eventually. Okay, so if you've got plenty of traction, don't engage front and rear. The, if you leave the rear on, it's not going to be too much of an issue. But if you're on rocky terrain, you're constantly turning, I wouldn't do it. It'll be like driving and full drive on a bitumen. You just don't do it. Another thing, if you are really, really stuck, but you have traction on all wheels, there's something else that's holding you. So don't just throw your lockers on and then try and scoot out because if you are stuck because of some other reason, your wheels are going to grip, you're not going to go anywhere, and something in your drivetrain has got to give. So just be mindful of that. So now to the great debate. A lot of people are divided on this. I'd say almost 50-50. Which is better, the front locker or the rear locker? Now I have a very strong opinion on which one I have chosen, and I have good reasons for it too. But you're going to have to wait for that. So this will be, this will be coming in a video right here. Front locker versus rear locker, which one should I get? So if you're not sure and you only want to get one locker, you can only afford one locker at the moment or whatever the reason, uh, watch that video and I'll explain to you why. Oh, and before we uh, wrap all this up, check out this new shirt, uh, designed by Sackwear. So thank you very much guys for designing that for us. And these will be on our website soon. Uh, also, Check out Sackware, of course. Uh, went to great length to design the shirt for us, and their shirts, they look bloody awesome, which is why we got them to design our shirt. So, you can subscribe right here, and please leave a comment below, and tell me what you think is better, the front or the rear. 
look forward to seeing, uh, seeing a bit of a debate there. All right, until next time, take care out in the tracks and trails. See ya.